Thank you for joining us today at Miniature Wargaming Labs. Today we'll be painting up our Anthelonica miniatures. These are the uh, French version of SWAT, so these could serve as your uh, GIGN or BRI or even RAID guys. So, f end of the day, French SWAT. Alright, so you look at this guy. This is the one we're going to be painting. We used him for these ones. Um, one thing I did not do because it's a pain. Um, where's a good example? You can, normally what happens, the way you tell the French part is they'll have G-I-G-N, B-R-I, or RAID written on the back of the, ja of the um, armor vests there, sometimes on the shield. Um, I'm leaving them blank so that they could be anything I want to be. And it's a pain writing that small. I thought about it, but it's like, no, I'll just do a simple paint job. Now, I found the press release photos that seem to um, inspire these sculpts. But if you go online and you look up um, GIGN, you'll see about a couple different paint jobs you can have, especially more recently. But I went ahead with this one. It's uh, pretty quick, so you can bang these guys out in um, a day. Uh, if you work, start in the morning and uh, work till night. So to paint this guy, I used, let me get my card out here, so primed him, Rust-Oleum Gray Primer. Used P3 Coal Black, Exile Blue, Great Coat Gray. Um, then from the AP Army Painter line, I used Matte Black, Ash Gray, Barbarian Flesh, and Matte White. From Vallejo, I used Glossy Black. And from the Citadel line, I used Sterling Mud, Reichlin Flesh Shade, so the sterling was the technical, that's what make the asphalt there. Reichland Flesh Shade and used a contrast paint, Space Wolves Gray, and that's how you get this, um, I just layered it over the sterling mud, which I covered with ash gray. You'll see how I did it. All right, let's go ahead and get started on this guy. So I've primed my model uh, Rust-Oleum Gray Primer. So you can see I've covered it pretty well, sticks well to uh, metal. So I'm going to take some P3 coal black. It's kind of a uh, bluish black color and we're just going to slop this on all over. Just something to go over rust gray. So I'm going to go for the um, slightly blue uh, jumpsuit that you see on some uh, French gendarmes, CIGNs. There's a variety of different uh, uniform combinations they wear depending on the year and where the unit is. I'll go for the, the more police blue. Now we're going to take some P3 Exile Blue. Just going to open up a little bit here. Let me find my dry brush. Ah, there it is. So I got my dry brush. You get a little bit of paint on there, and I'm just going to dust the cloth parts of the uniform. Just a little dusting there. This will kind of tint the coal black. Because I found the pre I found some of the photos using Google image Google images that I think inspired these models there. And it looks like uh, they had slightly blue. If you go to Anthelonica's website, they have um, a variety of paint jobs, all which check out when you go through Google Images. But we're going to go for like the standard dark blue, black webbing, uh, black firearms. All right, so we'll clean that out. Now we're going to take Army Painter Matte Black. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do the sh boots here, and like I said, there's a variety of images of what the GIGN guys are wearing. So some of them seem to have like their uh, desert boots, um, desert camouflage. So I might buy a couple more squads of these, just fill out all the different types of uh, uniforms I've seen. So we got the boots here. Got some tactical gear, 
Some of them have knee pads. I paint those black. Let's get the guns. Get the gloves. Sorry, the gloves. I'm going to paint the um, weapon system a different color. I definitely want to get... I don't she looks like he's wearing a jacket. It looks like a raid jacket. Not body armor. But it's hanging on him like he's wearing it over his body armor. Let me get the helmet. Well, since it looks like a jacket, I think all the jackets I've seen of them wearing are black. I've got like a little hoodie. As you can tell, I uh, paint some other ones as I go, so let's use an example of another one. I I've got something like that. That one doesn't have the face shield on there. The little riot helmet. So I'll just get this jacket painted. Now we're going to take some Great Coat Gray by P3. We're, and we're going to switch back to my dry brush. So same thing we did with the blue. But we're going to target just the black parts. So get the top of the shoes. This is a lot faster than going around and edge highlighting everything. <laughs> I'll just get the, you know, for the helmet, we'll just go. Ahead. Oops. That just tones it down a little bit. A little blue, a little dark gray. All right, let's get you back up in your seat. All right, so get rid of that. All right, now we're gonna go to, I wanna paint that riot shield visor, right visor. Okay, so P3 Frostbite. So this is um, very, light blue. I'm going to take our point brush here. And then we're just going to do the visor. And do the top edge here. Just one thick coat. Now we're going to take some Sterling Mud. I mean, it's not necessary to use Sterling Mud. A little Elmer's glue or PVA glue, whatever you want to call it. Some sand will do just fine for this. But we're essentially going to um, just put a little texture on the base. I want a little gravelly. So I know between the base and um, so the 25 millimeter base that he's on, and the model comes with its own integrated base in the molding process. So I use green stuff to kind of merge the two. But this will help create like a little rough texture to kind of hide the fluffy folds of the uh, green stuff. Let me just take. GW actually calls this a paintbrush. So if you're looking on their website where to find it, you're wondering why that guy's honking outside. Maybe you didn't hear that. Okay. We're almost done here. I just want a thin coat of this stuff. So you can paint this up to make it look like dirt or even like um, asphalt. Sand. All right. So we got that part done. 
Now what we're going to do is take some Null Noil, and I'm running low on this. Alright, so I'm going to take a brush I've messed up, I'm going to wet it a little bit, just get it working here. I'm just going to put a coat on here. Now this will darken down the blue and some of the gray that we put on. Yeah, I like what it did with the frostbite. If you're wondering why I'm using P3 on this one, is I saw the frostbite color of P3 and thought that'll make a good shield cover. All right, now we're gonna go let this dry. This is why I normally do this um, at night before I go to bed or before I go off and do something that's gonna take a while. All right, so we'll be back. Now with this figure, if you notice, you can see the neck back there, uh, part of the skin. So I'm going to take some barbarian flesh and use my extra tiny brush here. So I'm going to dip it, wipe it off a little bit so it gets a nice thin furrow. Just kind of go like that. It does make for a good spot color to remind you that it's just not a figure painted black. So, alright, put the brush down and then I can rotate the model in my hand there. Let's see, he's got chin strap coming down, covering it that way. So, this is probably the most harrowing because, you know, I've already painted some of the, this stuff. There's a mold on his chin that I didn't clean. It's tough to get in there. Sometimes you don't see this stuff until you get down in there. Uh, not too noticeable. Yeah, uh, since the neck you can see the most, let's go ahead and put a second coat just on the back of the neck. There we go. Now let me go back to the frostbite. up here. I'm going to pick a spot right there. Around the edge here. Try to create a little reflection. That angle I set there. Yeah, that. Got a nice little reflective plate. Oh, so let's put that away. Then what we're going to do is take some Army Painter Ash Gray. And so I'm going to take the helmet and the jacket. And I'm going to pick four places, okay? This is just four places because you don't want to go crazy with this. What we'll do is we'll just create a little... Tiny spot edge, like right there. One. Two. 
We count that as two. spots there. Cool. Now the rest of the ash gray I poured out. You know what, if you want to create more little spots around here, feel free. I just think less is more. Let's see if we go like on the shoes a little bit. You can put extra ones down there. All right, so now we're just going to paint up the Sterling mud with the ash gray. So we're going to try to, let's see what happens later. We're trying to make a little blend between asphalt and concrete that can be used for urban fights. Now I'm waiting for that base to dry. But while I'm waiting for that, I'm going to go ahead and get some Vallejo Glossy Black. And we're going to paint up his weapon system. And you see right off the bat already, that's um, based on all the other treatments we did with the black, we're getting a little variation, just a subtle twist on that. Of course, that's some of the problems with some of the um, urban police units, various other elite units out there. Um, get black on black on black, like how do we call that out? And once this dries, we'll do the other piece. Now we're going to do some of the detail work here. So I'm going to take some matte white. And I'm going to take my extra tiny brush. What I do is dip it and wipe most of the white off. And then I'll take the side of the brush and just put little couple of millimeter marks. What we're trying to do here is we've played around with different blacks and highlighting them or dry brushing them with different other colors and that allows us to make it look like a different material. Just the way the light, you imagine the photons are bouncing off the material. So we're doing that with the weapon system here. So you got one, two, three, four, five areas. You know, less is more. I don't want to make it look shiny, but you want to make it look like it's a hard surface that light would bounce on. And then what we'll do, as you can see where we had the frostbite or the frostbite, we'll just put a little touch of white there. Such a white there. And little spot color, let's say right like that. One more there. So within the frostbite, we're just going to put a little streak of white. Like that. I think there's a lot more interest to it. There we go. See now this looks this black looks different from that black, which looks different from the coal black with the bluish tint on it. So we can see that even though it's a very similarly toned model, there is some difference. Maybe, it put, maybe not from far away. Who knows? We'll see how it looks on the table. 
But to finish up the uh, base, I'm going to take a contrast paint. So a lot of times when I'm doing um, like asphalt for like Marvel Crisis Protocol, it'll just be a ton of um, like a glaze of black over there and have some of the gray pop up. But I have, for my 25 millimeters, I do this little blue. That way it can work on um, asphalt, concrete. It's just general industrial looking material. I find contrast works well for that because it stains the tops and put a heavy glooping on it and that's what contrast is for, heavy glooping. And whatever you ring your base with, that's your choice, but you know, helps 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 the guy kind of blend in. Of course, then you can see how you did. There we go. All right, so we're gonna call it a day with that guy. So, thanks for joining us at Miniature Wargaming Labs. Keep on painting.